Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's is gonna to focus on something a little bit different. You know, the last couple have focused on air warfare applications in the games, but this one, I'm gonna focus on one particular type of weapon. One that we've only seen discussed briefly in the Halo books, never seen in the Halo games, and by far the most terrifying and deadly to ever have been built by humanity. I'm of course talking about nuclear weapons. So what is a nuke? Well, nukes more or less are using different sort of mechanisms to condense matter down to a point where fusion starts to occur, where atoms are binding together. And the amount of energy created when this happens is astronomical. I mean, the, the, the destructive potential of nukes, I think everyone is well understood for how terrifying that can be. And what makes them even deadlier is the fact they don't need to be that large. I mean, nukes themselves, modern munitions are probably only a couple feet by four or five feet. They can be small enough to be carried in a suitcase. So how do nuclear weapons get delivered to the target? Well, in the real world, we have ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, which launch from fixed or mobile sites all the way across the planet by going up into space and then back down. Similar as if you had thrown a baseball really far. Submarine launched ballistic missiles are the same theory. They're just launched from a submarine, so they're very hard to detect and get very close to a target and it really reduces the reaction time. Nukes obviously can be delivered by aircraft. It just kind of limits how big they can be because you don't want to destroy your own plane that's dropping them. And they've even been scaled down to the point where they were demonstrated having been shot from artillery cannons or carried in you know, God forbid, a briefcase. And what makes nukes so destructive, as I mentioned, is both the heat, everyone I think is familiar with that, the flash and the horrifying images of people's shadows being left in the pavement because there's nothing left of them. But really, I, what I would say is the most destructive method for nuclear weapons is the blast wave, the pressure wave, because that can that can go out to seven, eight plus miles from the epicenter. You only need to be in the same zip code as an enemy force in order to defeat them, flipping their vehicles and wounding their soldiers through just blast effects. Nukes themselves are quite hard to defeat. I mean, when we talk ICBMs and other ballistic missiles, you have to hit the munition itself head on. There's no missile associated with it once it is up in space when it's re-entering the atmosphere. It really is what we call the re-entry vehicle. It's just the nuke. And so you must hit that directly. Otherwise, you're not gonna have very good effects on it. You know, if it's moving at 20 times the speed of sound and you try to airburst the munition near it, it, it's not gonna hit, it's not gonna do much. They are hard to detect. I mean, like I said, the nukes are not very large now with the technology we have these days. And especially when they're on terminal approach, i.e. like they're on their way back down towards the surface, they're small and they're moving incredibly fast, so it's hard to see them. And really, if you see them, it may be too late to do anything about it. Especially start to add new technologies like hypersonic weapons. These are new kind of vehicles that go incredibly fast, you know, several times the speed of sound, but they do it in atmosphere while maneuvering. And so now it's not even a simple like physics calculation like it is with a ballistic missile where you're trying to hit it at a point on its arc. Now you're having to try and hit a dynamic target. That hypersonic glide vehicle is moving and you're trying to hit it at the same time. All that said, now let's take that and apply it to the UNSC. So in the games, we don't ever really hear about nukes being used. In the books, they're brought up, having said that humanity used them against the Covenant, they were not very effective, which I disagree and agree with. There are some circumstances, yes, I think the logic used in the books makes sense. There's some where I don't think it passes the sniff test, where I don't think it is actually that true. So let's talk nukes that we have heard about in Halo. Well, so you have Havoc nukes, which are mentioned a handful of times. The most famous, I think, ever brought up in the Halo books is the Nova, which was a cluster of nukes that would use to multiply their power. It was used to devastating effect against the Covenant in space. It was threatened to be used on the planet Reach, in the books at least, but it ended up not. Uh, in Halo Reach, the game, it's not brought up nor seen. 
uh, which is a little bit disappointing. I think it would have been really cool. And really, on top of that, there's no clear use of nukes, as far as I remember, ever actually being used in the games. And I think it would really have made a difference to help them. And, and how? Well, nukes can be mass-produced. I mean, if you take a look at NATO and the Soviet Union way back in the Cold War, each had like thousands upon thousands of nukes, to the point where it took several treaties in order to draw that limit back down. For a civilization that spans the entire galaxy, I mean, we're talking hundreds of thousands, even millions of nukes potentially that can be produced and ready to go. The Covenant, yes, they do have energy shields and alien technology, but at the end of the day, physics is physics, right? In space, no, I don't think nuclear weapons are that great, simply because there is no blast wave. There's no atmosphere or pressure to propagate through. So you're relying on just heat effects, which you can defeat. Stuff like ceramic plates or ablative materials, the exterior will burn due to the extremely high heat, but because the material itself has a very low heat transfer coefficient, heat doesn't really make its way to the interior. It's what we use on space capsules and the space shuttle, when they come back through the atmosphere. I mean, they're, you know, at extremely high temperatures on the exterior, but it's able to protect the interior of the aircraft. So yes, something like the Covenant probably do have materials like that around their ship, so that if you detonate a nuke or any other type of heat weapon, it's not really gonna have much of an effect. Where that changes though, is when we start talking about fighting in atmosphere. And like my last couple videos, I mean, most of the times we see the Covenant, in the games at least, and honestly, even in the books, they're on the surface of planets trying to secure objectives, whether it's some sort of forerunner technology or building or location. At the end of the day, there's a number of planets where they're not just glassing them from orbit. They're down on the surface duking it out with humanity. And in circumstances like that, there's not much you can do to stop the power of a nuke. Now, you might say, like, oh, well, they have energy shields around their ships. That'll defeat a nuke. And it's like, yes, but also no. The conservation of energy still applies. So energy in equals energy out. If you detonate a 10 megaton nuke on an energy shield of a Covenant cruiser, that energy shield has to absorb and dissipate all of that energy. You know, it can do that via heating gum, which is probably bad for the ship as it'll boil alive. It can be stripped away from the ship because it's unable to defeat the energy, in which case this ship will probably get blown apart or some other hand wavy sci-fi technology. And what I'm getting at is we talk about nuclear weapons and power on this scale, there's not much you can do to stop it. You have to be able to redirect that energy somehow, and that's, it's just too much. I mean, it's, it's an insane amount of energy generated by these weapons. And that's talking about nukes that we have today. We're not even getting to the fact that 500 years in the future, they're clearly capable of making nukes on a scale that we cannot even imagine today. And energy shields, okay, maybe on spaceships have enough power source or power draw that they can defeat something like a nuke. But when we start talking about individual like elites and grunts um, and vehicles, there's not much they can do to stop it. And that's kind of what makes nukes so useful. A planet like Reach that had thousands of them, you know, hypothetically, could have used those to defeat Covenant forces on the ground. I mean, would it prevent them from winning? Probably not, but at least you're taking a shit ton of them with you on the way out. The type of armor you would need to defeat nuclear weapons, you know, due to weight and stuff like that, just becomes impractical at the smaller scale. So nukes could have been used to blow holes both in Covenant lines, so that the UNSC can make a counterattack, or in a more Pyrrhic way and self-defeating, just using nukes to delay the inevitable, to disrupt and deny the enemy, in this case the Covenant, the ability to continue their attacks. Especially when we start talking about stuff like radiation, now you're contaminating the environment. The Covenant may not care, but radiation to almost all living creatures will cause issues with their health and eventually radiation poisoning. And you're just adding more of a burden on the Covenant to continue their attacks. That's all, all it's about really at this point. So kind of like my closing thoughts is it's like, you know, we, we see them in the books. They don't make appearance in the games. However, they're one of the most deadliest and terrifying weapons we've ever made. And I think if the UNSC used them on a larger scale, it really could have slowed down the Covenant compared to what we ended up seeing. That said, I feel like an obvious answer as to why they're not seen is the fact that games are supposed to be a way for us to escape. They're supposed to be fun. Talking and using weapons that are terrifying and very, very real that we have to fear today. I mean, if you look at current events, nukes are being threatened. I think it makes sense that Bungie's like, hey, maybe we don't take this very real, incredibly destructive and terrifying weapons, and instead we just stay in the sci-fi, give people a little bit of a break. I could understand that. 
And in a way it even makes sense because if you make something too realistic, it loses its charm, just becomes another reminder of some of the things that we have to face today. I hope you liked today's video. And if you like similar content, feel free to leave ideas below. Shout out to my seven subscribers. Mom, dad, you guys uh, are the best.